Hello. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Tom, for welcoming me. I'm glad to be here again. Please be seated. I think before I say anything, we're going to show a short video. So this is a Healing Jesus campaign to say it's we're on and we just want to show a short clip. Thank you. There's a businessman, there's a widowed wife, a smiling face with a shattered life, a teenage girl with a choice to make. It's crowded here in church today, and the preacher says as the sermon ends, please close your eyes, bow your heads. Is there anyone in need of prayer? Oh, Jesus wants to meet you here, cause we all and we all
beginning in 2004, the Healing Jesus campaign has been on a mission to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. What began as a small gathering of people has grown into one of the biggest evangelistic efforts in Africa. Over the years, evangelist Dagwood Mills and the Healing Jesus campaign have traversed the continent of Africa, impacting nations. The evangelist has been blessed with the opportunity to visit with various presidents of these nations, sharing with them the saving gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity that we have here today. We ask you to guide us in the few minutes that we have. Thank you for all that has been shared already. Such amazing revelation. We are grateful, Holy Spirit, for the church. And Jesus, we ask you to, to guide us, to lead us, to bless every heart, open our eyes. Thank you for the spirit of revelation. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. You may be seated. I want to thank Pastor Tom for this amazing invitation to be here with you in Harare. It's, an, it's a real honor, and I've been blessed being here this morning, listening to the amazing messages. Um, Bishop Vaughn preached a powerful message on knowledge and understanding, um, and that was Jeremiah 3.15, and if you, if you read on to the next verse, 16, can you give me 16 uh, in the message in the message Bible? I don't know if you can do that. Yeah, in the message Bible. It says, you know, as a result of the knowledge and understanding, right? It says, and then this is what will happen. You will increase and prosper in the land. Yes, you will increase and prosper in the land. And the time will come when God's decree, when no one will say any longer, oh, for the good old days. Remember the Ark of the Covenant. It won't even occur to anyone to say the good old days. So, 
the King James Bible says, and you shall be increased in the land. So knowledge and understanding is, is what causes the church to increase and will cause you to increase and to prosper in the land. So open your heart to receive uh, the knowledge and understanding because the Bible says God will, he will give you pastors after his own heart. People who God himself likes, not just the people like, but God loves those people and they will feed you. They will feed you with knowledge and with understanding. So that's a blessing. Bishop, thank you so much for that amazing uh, message. And our Pastor Tom was also sharing us, with us about suffering. You know, I have a book called Losing, Suffering, Sacrificing, and Dying. And somebody, somebody told me that that's a bad title. <laughs> but it's not a bad title. It's a very biblical title. And, and, and it is because of where Pastor Tom Duchel is in the realm of the spirit that he beholds the cross. And he's not just here because um, he's lucky, but he's here because he has suffered. He has suffered many things. You know, in my country, we have a proverb that says that when a goat is sweating, you cannot see it. Yes. When a goat is sweating, you can't see that it's sweating. <laughs> so many pastors, or many people who are serving the Lord, go through many things and are going through many things. But you can't see it because they are overcoming. They're overcoming. And they are pressing through. And many are suffering Many things for the kingdom's sake. <laughs> okay. All right, I think. I'll just move on. Amen. So, Pastor Tom Duchel, thank you for, for being here since 1979. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for thank you for staying staying for so many years and living here and thank you for going through going through what you went through as a young person as a middle-aged person all the way to where you are now. Thank you for this, the suffering that you, you've, you've kept that no one would believe if you were to open your mouth and to say certain things. Maybe people would just fall down and collapse. <laughs> and they'll think you're talking about somebody else. Thank you. Thank you for being uh, a wonderful uh, servant. A mustard seed that God threw into this land. And um, thank you for overcoming many things and being an example. I know there are many things you've done that you didn't do for yourself, but you did for your children and for the other children. Yes. And that's why the Bible says, honor your father, that it may be well with you. Because you will never know what your father has gone through for you. And he cannot tell you, because you cannot even imagine it. Because when you grow up, your parents are old, and you, you imagine them, oh, he's an old man. But he was a young man before. And he has been through many things. So... God bless you, Pastor Tom. We appreciate 
We appreciate you staying here with your dear wife uh, all these years. And um, you don't need to tell me anything. I know because I'm also in the ministry. I want to dedicate a song to you. Um, this song, you know, the Bible says, the, Bi the Bible says, the Bible says, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. A mustard seed, and I know that when you came to this country in, in 1979, no one would know what came here. You, I'm sure you weren't welcomed at the airport. I'm sure there was no, no group to meet you or clap for you or to, 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 to tell you we've been waiting for you. you know, but the Bible says that the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. It's like nothing has happened. And you throw it in there. The Bible says that when it is grown, when it is grown, it's the biggest tree and the beds of the air come and rest in it. And truly, you have fulfilled that scripture in Matthew 13 and 31. That a mustard seed thrown in there, not recognized, and trampled upon. But the Bible says, when it is grown, if it grows, when it is grown, it becomes a mighty tree. And the beds, all of you are the beds. We are all beds. We are all beds. You are spiritual beds that have come to rest on this spiritual tree. So I, I want to dedicate this little song to you. It's called a master scene. Jesus said, the kingdom of God. Is like a mustard seed, the least of all the seeds. But when it is grown, it becomes a mighty tree. The birds come and rest, yeah, yeah. There are many things, they start out small. You may miss them, you tree of the mustard seed it becomes a mighty tree yeah of God, like a mustard seed, a very small word, or a small book, in a little song, it's another mustard seed, yeah, yeah, you must recognize a mustard seed. It will become a mighty tree Hallelujah. What a blessing. 
Please take your seats. Thank you. Amen. So, we are blessed to see uh, Pastor Tom's example. I use it as an example all the time about the, the power of missions and missionaries. So, today I want to share with you anyway, because I, I think I'm running. Hello? All right. Out of time. So, the church must send or it will end. The church must send or it will end. It's a book. Amen. So, um, and all the books are in this little box here, some of the new ones. Now, I believe that the church is supposed to go on from victory to victory. Amen. Uh, the church is not decreasing. Amen. And the church will not decrease. But everything has what will bring it to an end. You know, everything has, can come to an end. A marriage can come to an end. A friendship can come to an end. Even a nation can come to an end. An empire can come to an end. The Roman Empire is not there anymore. The British Empire is not really there. The uh, other empires, Mongolian and other powerful empires of the world, they don't really exist. So, something brought them to an end. And so, the point is that the church also can end. And there is something that the will of God is not that the church should end. Now, this church can end. Churches end usually slowly. When churches are ending, they end slowly. They die off slowly. All right? So, uh, when is going to die? You know, there are two ways to die, suddenly and slowly. These are the two ways. <laughs> and the, the church usually dies slowly. It doesn't end in just a day. Uh, you'll be surprised. No matter the kind of crisis that happens to a church, it dies, it tends to die slowly. So, Revelations chapter 3 and verse 2. All right. I wish there was somebody who could just type in these things as fast as I say them. But if not, I'll read. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. Is writing to the church of Sardis, and he says, these are the words from him who has the seven spirits of God, and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a name, a reputation that you are alive, but in reality, you are dead. So God does speak to dead churches. But in the next verse, he says, wake up and strengthen the things that remain, all right, which is about to die. It's about to die. I've not found your deeds completed in the sight of God or meeting his requirements. Another version, as Bishop Vaughn told us, we have all these versions we read from these days. <laughs> It says, I've not found thy works perfect before God. The King James. I'm a King James man because I became a, I've been a Christian for so many years. Serving the Lord and working in the church. So, I'm a King James man. Now, 
God wants his church to go from glory to glory and always to be relevant. But churches tend to be really relevant and at a point not so relevant. 1 John 2 and verse 17. And if you don't have it, I'll read it myself. It says, the world passes away and the last thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So, if we keep doing the will of God, you abide forever. Which is also to say, you remain relevant forever. But when you stop doing the will of God, 1 John 2 and verse 17. When you stop doing the will of the Lord, all right? You, you don't abide forever. You are not always there. You become, you sort of disappear. And you don't become relevant. And if you look at the church world, you see that at, at, a, at a point in life, some churches are really relevant. And they are like the main church. You say, if you go to this country, you know, one of the main churches there, you know, where God is moving, ah, this church or that church. Or that church. But, but a time comes when you no longer mention those churches, but you mention some other church. And that church which was so important before is, 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 fa is fading. And it's not the epicenter of Christian activity anymore. So it is fading right before your eyes. And if you've been a Christian for some years, you'll see churches fade gradually. The pastor preaches to fewer and fewer people, but it's gradual. The, the people become fewer and fewer as the pastor grows older. <laughs> yeah. If you go to America today, you'll find many churches that were on television and that were famous. They are, they are empty. And they are empty. But I told you, churches don't die suddenly. They die slowly. So usually the people who are around in the church don't realize that the church is finishing. That they are actually in something that is dying. I don't know if the people in this country want to hear what I'm saying. Maybe, maybe I should go to Madagascar and preach there. You think I should stay in Zimbabwe? <laughs> All right. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18, it says, The path of the just is as the shining light that shines more and more unto the perfect day. The path of a just man. You know, if you are following God, your path is supposed to shine more. You're supposed to be increasing in your shining, not decreasing in your shine. But if you look at churches, pastors, and ministers, the shine goes down slowly. But that's not the way it's supposed to be. The Bible says the path of the just shines more and more until the perfect day. So Celebration Church and every church represents, I don't know which, which you are a pastor of where, I don't know. I don't know who you are. But I'm reading from the Bible. I'm giving you knowledge and understanding. The path of the just is supposed to shine more and more, not less and less. 
Look at your church and see how many people are left in the church. Ask yourself what is going on. And don't be blind to the realities of church work. You see, the church is the main thing for us. Maybe you don't know. It's our precious everything. It's the church. Jesus said, I will build my, Matthew 16, 18. I will build my church. To me, it is the only project I know that Jesus is doing. I don't know if you know of any other project. Maybe you can see me immediately after we close. You give me any project that Jesus Christ is doing. That he's building. I, I, I would like to know. So I will join that project. Because I don't want to have anything doing that my master is not doing. I don't know why. I don't even know why I'm on earth. Every time you celebrate your birthday, you must ask the Lord, why didn't you kill me this year? Why, why have you allowed me to, to get to this point? You know, there are people who feel that um, oh, certain messages are for, you know, others. You know, one, one time, preaching to a young man and he said, listen, in our country, the life expectancy is 82. So this message is about eternity. They don't apply to us now because life expectancy is 82. Wow. But what you must realize is that when it comes to eternity, eternity is not at the end. Of this journey, like we're going a journey and eternity is at the end. Eternity is on the sideline like this. Every step, you can just step into eternity. You can step into eternity at the age of 25. You just cross over, you are in eternity. You can step into eternity at the age of 32. You just step in, you are out. You can step at the age of 40. You just step in and you are. Eternity is not at 82 or 85, depending on the life expectancy of your country. Yes. We are here for a reason. God has allowed you to exist. To breathe. To live. To escape a thousand accidents. To have life. To go for lab tests and x-rays for a hundred times and always come back finding nothing. It's the grace. grace. If you are here, you are here for a reason. You are here to do the will of God. And that is the only reason why you are left here. And, And the will, the will of God, the will of Jesus is I will build my church. I will build my church. So I want everybody here to be conscious of the fact that Jesus wants his church to be built. And if you want to please him, you must join in this great effort to build the church. To build this church and every other church. Oh yes. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Oh yes, I'm preaching. And just like our bishop said, this is McDonald's. You can't change the order. Please, I want you to notice. We all, with an open face, beholding the glass, In the glass, the glory of the Lord, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18, are changed into the same image 
We are changed from glory to glory. We change from glory to glory. Even as by the Spirit of the Lord. That means that when we behold, like our mother told us, the children saw their father preaching and you become what you look at. So that's why the son is preaching. Because he saw it and saw it and saw it and he became it. He says, we're beholding the glory. So you don't have to focus on people's problems and on people's sins and people's mistakes and people's downfalling and discuss it and analyze. Always you know the problems in the world. If you don't take care, the problem will come into your room. Beholding the glory as in a glass, we are changed. And how are you changed? You are changed from glory. Glory is an old word. We don't use it anymore. The word actually is beauty. We are changed from beauty to beauty. You become more and more beautiful. So the church is supposed to grow and become more and more beautiful and not to become more and more withered and more and more fading and more and more decreasing. So we have to ask ourselves, what is it that changes churches? You know, I always thank God that I'm saved because, you know, I hated church. You know, when I, when I uh, was at home with my parents, my father would take us to this church. He said, Sunday, you go to church. He would drop us, but he would go somewhere else. <laughs> he, had another, he had another church, but he felt we would be fit in better in this church. So he'd drop us there, and then he would go somewhere. I don't know if he went to church, but I'm, he, he did have a he did have a pastor. He did have a free. He did have a priest. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hated it. It was boring. Boring, boring, boring. I didn't understand anything. I didn't like. I didn't like it. I didn't understand it. It was dead. My. My, father, my best favorite priests, you know, in, in one of those churches, there were two different ones. Also. One of them, they had an arrangement of the hymns we were going to sing. So I, I, I used the hymns to know where we were in the service. <laughs> right? Have you, have you seen that sort of church before? Yes. And then also, my favorite priests were the one who would say, we shall sing the first and the last stanza. And I said, oh, this guy is really in tune. And the service is going to be shorter. You see. But finding Christ. Finding Christ. When I found Christ. When I got born again. I never went back there. I went to the church where they preached Jesus. Yes. And I joined a group that was about Jesus. That was singing and playing instruments. And preaching every weekend. Oh, yes. And I, and, I, and, I, and I went to church from Monday to Saturday. Sunday I rested. Monday to Saturday was something. Going to church. Now, the church becomes dead. And fewer and fewer people go to the church. Go to England today. The churches, are, the churches are empty. Empty. They are for sale. The buildings are empty. How did they become empty? Go to France. You'll be there, but listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> I know you'll be there, but please listen to what I'm saying. How did they, they empty, they're just, they're just museums. It's, it's, it's fantastic. You can't believe it. I mean, nobody goes to church. The church, and I was once in Zurich. And uh, we, I went to this church building. A man said, 
We have church every other week. We have it when? Every other week. Like this Sunday is church, then the next time is in two weeks. And he said there are only eight old ladies who come to the church in Switzerland. Because, you know, I'm half Swiss. My mom is Swiss. So, she said there are only eight old ladies. And she, he said that the problem also is that they are finding it difficult to climb the steps. Because there were some steps there. So, we are thinking of closing everything completely. Yes. You may look and you may laugh. But the Bible says that which has been is that which shall be. He said there is nothing new under the sun. Many churches you see today, today, huh, they will not exist soon. Even the pandemic wiped out so many churches. The pandemic was such that if your church is not real, it's finished from the pandemic. <laughs> It's gone. You are done for. I mean, that's it. It's over. The pandemic showed the difference and the differences between churches. Oh, yes. Many churches closed out. And in America, many churches have not come back. I heard somebody say, no, attendance has never picked up. In our church, attendance has picked up. We are, we are back to, you see, one day I, 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 had announced, I saw an announcement on BBC. They said in Dubai, uh, the, the traffic, the air traffic and passenger numbers are back to pre-pandemic levels. So if aircraft passenger levels are back to pre-pandemic levels, then why are churches not back to pre-pandemic levels? I don't know whether I should go to Malawi to continue uh, preaching this message. Yes. Maybe the people in Zimbabwe don't want to hear these kind of things. <laughs> the church must send or it will end. When Jesus came what was his first command? His first, he said, come, come, you come. I will make you fishers of men. He didn't say, I will make you social workers. He didn't say, I will make you businessmen. He didn't say, I will, I will, I will, I will let you uh, uh, build schools. He said, I will make you fishers of men. Then, listen, in his, last, in his last message, in Matthew 28, 19, he said, go. This was his last command. Go. And when I say, he said, he said you, he wouldn't make you build schools. We have, we have many schools. Don't, don't misunderstand. There's always somebody who wants to say, take something and then ch change it. I don't know who these people are. Ask your neighbor, tell your neighbor, be very careful. Don't, don't come here to misinterpret and misread messages. Tell your neighbor, I'm a spiritual policeman. I'm here to monitor your, your, your behavior and your thoughts. Now listen, Jesus said, go, but we have stayed. Yeah. Go, but we have stayed. The church is, a, is, a, is an organi organism which is supposed to move. It's supposed to send people. Pastor Tom, he said, he said, I will always use him as an example. He came, he didn't know. He, I remember when he told his story, he said, he didn't know. He saw Rhodesia. He said, God said, go to Rhodesia. Okay, so this is the example. The, this church is a fruit. It's a mustard seed. There's a fruit of it. And the effect of it you can see. So that, that is what he has done. And that means that many people in the church are supposed to, he's not supposed to be the last. If he is the last missionary, then that's the end of us. 
that's the end of this church. Yes. Because, you see, the church is being invaded by many evils. Before I come to that, I always remember, sit down, this, this story is not so a happy story, but I remember a Japanese airline which was about to crash. I'm sure you've, you, you may have watched that documentary. It was a jumbo jet. And what happened was that a part of the wing, not the two wings, the back wing, the little ones. You know, when a plane is taking off, what makes it go up? The wings, the little wings at the back go down. They, there's an elevator. So the, it, it, it goes down. When it goes down, then the, the head comes up and then it, it flies. You may not have seen it before, but you, next time you are at the airport, you watch it. So what happened was part of the Part of the wing came off. And that's also what is used to control left and right. So it went off and flew off. So the plane was still flying, but the pilots could not control it. Full of passengers, 400 or so. So the plane was going on its own journeys. Like it to go down like this. Down, down, then to go up. Then to go left. Then to go right. Full of passengers. I think when it, 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 it crashed up after about an hour, it, was a, it took about an hour before it eventually crashed. Four people, I think, survived. Four people. They were found on the mountain. It just crashed straight into a mountain. Now, one of the things I remember reading was they said that they found many messages like they are written. You see, this is a rare thing where you know you are going to die. You've got about an hour. Maybe 30 minutes. You don't really know what. So people started writing. Hmm? I, I don't know whether you are listening to They started writing their last messages. And when they found them in their bodies, in their bags, all the messages were there. What do you think they wrote about? Don't forget to feed the cat. <laughs> do you think they had a don't forget to feed the cat? No. Don't forget to iron your shirt when you are going to school. No. What do you think they wrote? It must have been the most important thing to them. Because it was their last message. And here is Jesus standing on the Mount of Olives. He's telling his disciples the last thing. The one who said, I'll build my church. And he said, go. Go. Go to the world. Go into all the world. And preach my gospel. That's how come we are standing in this beautiful church, which has been here for years. It's because that command, in that command, is our blessing. In that command is our relevance. You will stop being relevant. First John 2, 17. He that keeps the will of God abides forever. I'm telling you, you will not be relevant or important anymore. One time I went to uh, America and I saw a church. They were doing a demonstration against these things that are coming into the church. This was years ago. I was just looking. And you know what Jesus said? You know what the Bible says? The Bible talks about the defensive armor. What protects us? What protects and defends the church in the realm of the spirit? If you are not spiritual, you will not understand what I'm saying. The helmet of salvation. Preaching about salvation. People don't even know how to preach about salvation. The message of salvation is thrown out of the window. Today, what are we preaching about? You even wonder. And the feet shot with the gospel. Take off. You have two sections of your armor gone. Your head is gone. Your feet are gone. 
and you are barefoot, running and fighting. And you see somebody fighting, but so that's why the church is bleeding. Do you remember the movie Die Hard? Do you, do you remember Die Hard? Stop pretending that you don't, you don't know the movie. I don't like it. It is behaving funny. Yes. I don't know why people become so spooky and like you are so spiritual, you don't watch movies in the church. Do you remember the die hard? He went, he, he went to visit his wife. Is that the one? Christmas time. It was in a, some skyscraper fighting. And the, one of the things about that movie, when he was fighting the terrorists, was that he, he lost his shoes. He was barefoot. And the whole movie, he was barefoot, walking on glass. And he was fighting. And you, you, feel, you feel pain throughout the movie. <laughs> At least I did. I was also, this man, his leg is paining him. But you know, it was all acting. Just like the church, hypocrites. You know, the word, hip, the word hypocrisy is acting. Do, do you know that the word actor is the word hypocrite. So if, for instance, they were going somewhere and then there was, the actors were coming for the movie, they said, oh, the hypocrites are coming at 2 o'clock. <laughs> the, hypo- the hypocrites will be here at 2 p.m. Yeah. Listen, you know why the church is invaded with all kinds of false doctrines? Huh? Oh, we are, we, are, we, are, we are without our shoes. How much of the church is evangelizing? What are we preaching? What are we preaching? What, what, what is the topic? It's always something to do with success, money, and that's why nobody will go anywhere. Because if you teach people to be successful, and so I, I want to be successful to have money, to be safe, to be secure, everybody is going to choose a safe and a secure place. And then you look at a secure place, you say Togo, you say Congo, you say Nigeria, <laughs> you mention different countries, and that's why you see God is removing safety from many countries. America is shocked that today people can just get up and start shooting anywhere. They can't be, they can't even believe it. Yeah. One, past, one, one prophet came and he started prophesying. He pointed to one man and said, I see in the realm of the spirit. I see you in Paris. You, I see you as a missionary in Paris. And the brother stood up and said, I receive it. Then he saw another one and said, Kadabalala. You, I see you as a missionary in Massachusetts, in, in, in Boston. Boston. The, the, the brother stood up, I receive it. He came to another one. He said, Shada Kota Palora Simama. I see you in London. Then he came to another brother and he said, Kata Loba Shataraba. I see you in Democratic Republic of Congo. The brother said, Tofia Kwa, God, God forbid. God forbid. He said, I refuse it. Satan, I, re- I rebuke you. Satan, I rebuke you. You send me to Democratic Republic of Congo. Never. Satan, you are bound today in the name of Jesus. I. Because our messages are full of safety. Prosperity. Nobody's preaching about the cross. The Bible says the preaching of the cross is the power of God. That's where there's power. When you preach, sacrifice, give your life, sow a seed of your life in God. My time is up. Now, in conclusion I'm just going to surprise you as I conclude 
And I think you need to sit down and fasten your seatbelts for this one. As I conclude, Galatians chapter 1 and verse 8, in conclusion, it says, Though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, any other gospel than that which we have preached, let him be accursed. And as we said before, so say I now, again, that if any preach any other gospel, let him be a curse. Paul's curse is working in the church today. He has cursed all those who are preaching other gospel of money, gospel of safety, gospel of whatever, I don't know, blessing. What, it, it, it's as you are trying to spoil the word blessing. He said, let them be a curse. Look at the church today. You have never seen a poorer church than we have today. With all our money preaching, we don't have money. If you have money, show me by doing the work of God. Money and prosperity is not showing me a car. Come on now. What is a car? A car is a toy. Are you a child? Are you a child? Is it a car that you are showing? Showing God to show me that you are prosperous. Ah, what is a car? Somebody's got to be crazy. Since when did the car show whether you are prosperous? Let him be a curse. That's why today you have people from who who whom we would never have accepted even in the church as that a Christian can practice something like this are now the heads of churches and our pastors. Huh? What is a curse? It's a curse in the church that people who practice the most, the greatest abominations are ordained priests and are the leaders of churches. If, there's, if that is not a curse, tell me what is a curse. If that's not a curse, tell me what is a curse. Yeah, I mean like the opposite is now our head and he is ordaining and marrying people. My goodness. Yeah. You see pastors yeah. preach about money from morning to evening taking a million offerings and they don't have anything still. If that is not, it's a curse. Curse is poverty, frustration, failure, defeat. He says, if any man preach another gospel, what is the gospel? God so loved the world. What is the gospel? God so loved the world. Jesus Christ, the savior of this world. Jesus Christ, the savior of this world. He's, the, he's our savior. He died for us on the cross. God so loved the world that he gave his son, Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. This is the sweet, sweet gospel. It will never be improved. It will never be edited. It will never be upgraded. It will never be improved. It will never be advanced. That is the gospel. It is always the gospel. I studied medicine for seven years. Medical school. And I tell you. Eh, I tell you guys. The books that I studied from, they've all been edited. They've all been upgraded, updated, changed. But the Bible that I'm preaching from, the gospel of Jesus Christ, it has never been edited or updated or upgraded in any way. There's no new truth. Lift your hands. Jesus, thank you for dying for us. Thank you for telling us to build your church. Thank you for telling us to go out. To preach your word. Thank you for loving us. Being kind to us and choosing us. That we would know you. That we would come to you. Give us a heart Lord. A heart that thinks oh Lord about others. That thinks about those who don't know you Lord. And shows us that this is the message. There is no other work to do. Than to preach your word. And to build your church. Oh I pray now Lord. That the defenses of the church. Will be raised up Lord. The preparation of the gospel and the helmet of salvation will come back into position, Lord, that we shall be delivered from the curse that is all over the earth. 
We give you thanks and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Here I am, send me. Here I am, send me. Here I am, send me to see your kingdom come. Come on, guys. Your will be done. Declare it now. Here I am, send me. the needy, feed the poor, to help the orphan meet their needs, to touch the lowly, sow your seed. Who can I ask to go with us? Who can I send to save the lost? This play, but okay. Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe, Shana, Shana people, especially Shana in the belly, where you're a bit too shy, a little bit too quiet. We, you need to respond. The Bible, we say, your response determines. See, these ones have some destiny happening. We need. We need some destiny. Now, the, the, the reason why I asked you just to come, please forgive me, but this needs a, a specific appointed prayer. Now, 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 what happens is, you see, you see, there's two things, though. As he was preaching, oh, my spirit. I never, when I met that Pastor Tom guy, Within three days, we were engaged. Three months, we were married. Two weeks, we were in Africa. Six months, we started the church. I didn't even question it somehow because it was, it was the Spirit of God, right? So, yes, there is a call, but there's also a call. There's also a call to be committed. I need a musician to stay that can keep this going while you go out. You know what I'm saying? There is a place. So I pray that every single one, and I want him to pray over you because he has an anointing to specifically pray that you're calling and your place. You don't want to just go just to go. No, there is a call. And he knows. God knows. God knows. And some of you need to stay and support and be the Aaron in hers. Yeah? Some of you need to be Aaron in her. And you need to do other things. But this one is going to pray for you now. I 
please. A specific declaration, a specific prayer that the Spirit of God is able to move and they hear and they respond because response determines destiny. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Listen, the church must send or it will end. That's a mystery. Why would Jesus, who wants to build his church, tell the people who will build the church, go into all the world? Because you see, when you go, you are changed. Pastor Tom is different from every other American who he was a colleague to in, in America before he came here. He's completely different. He's a changed person. Because going changes you. It yeah. makes you a real Christian. It makes you stable. It makes you faithful. It makes you suffer. It makes you change even your personality. Oh yes. And of course, wherever God is sending you, you know, you must go. And if he's sending you to, to be here, then you must come. This is, this is your field. But here, you are a mustard seed. You are a little drop being sent everywhere. Listen. Listen. There, there, is, there is nothing like there is nothing like being saved without being called. Can you put it on 2 Timothy 1 9? Put it on. There's nothing like being saved without being called. I'm waiting for you. you guys see me for laying on of hands after. It says, who has saved us? This is Paul. Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling? There's nothing like just saved. Saved us and called us. Everybody is called. It's, it's, it's you who hasn't heard it. All of you who are here, who are there, who are wherever you are, he has saved us. Look at it on the screen now. He has saved us and called us with the Holy God. Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose. Whatever God wants. Whatever God wants. But I tell you, if there was ever a shining example of, of a missionary somewhere, sent somewhere, and you see, a, mission, a missionary is not somebody on holiday for six weeks. You know, ministry takes your life. It doesn't take it doesn't take a few weeks or a few months of your life. And that is why when Cain and Abel offered, this one offered blood. This one offered salad, vegetables. God doesn't eat salad. God wants your life, your whole life. He wants the whole life. God, God is not after, God is not after a weekend or a holiday, summer vacation. He wants your whole life. So those who think you can accomplish something in two years, somebody's going to be crazy. Listen. The whole life, the man standing here is almost 70 years old. He came here 20 whatever years old. That's it. He's been a Christian for so many years. Serving the Lord and working in the church. That's all he's done. Serving the Lord working in the church. Yes. God wants your life. I said God wants your life, your whole life. Lift your hands. He wants you. He doesn't want your money. Your money is nothing. Come on. He wants you. He wants you. He wants everyone in this church to believe and to know that you are not just saved. You are saved and called. He has saved you and called you. Lift up your hand and surrender yourself to Jesus. Lord, I surrender my life. Lord, I surrender my life to your call, to your will, to your plan, to your purpose. Thank you, Lord, for faithfulness. Thank you for opening the hearts, opening the ears, opening our hearts and touching us, Lord. Sending us, Lord, everywhere according to your plan, according to your purpose. Thank you that there shall be no longer barrenness, Lord, and emptiness, Lord. 
and hollowness, Lord, and shallowness in our midst. Thank you for your power that is ministered at this moment to everyone, Lord. Thank you for saving us, Lord. Thank you for calling us, Lord. Thank you for sending us, Lord. Thank you for touching our lives, Lord. Thank you for raising up more sons and daughters, Lord, of Pastor Tom, Lord, in this place, Lord. Thank you for raising up new apostles, Lord, and pastors and teachers and workers, Lord, and helpers, Lord, and singers, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lift your holy hands up and receive from the Lord grace, uh, grace to hear, grace to obey, grace to follow, grace to say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, here am I. Send me, Lord. Use me, Lord. If you can use anyone, Lord, use me, Lord. Touch my life, Lord. Mata sako parabala, mayola mashando kabala. Use me, Lord, I pray. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you that he that began a good work, he that started a good work in our lives shall surely bring it to a perfect end. We give you thanks, Lord. We give you praise, Lord. We thank you for starting something and finishing it, Lord, in our life. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone shouted your loudest, Amen. tell you something you know when when you are with a great person it can it can make you turn off your engines because pastor tom is here there are many of us whose engines are low you are almost off because you are running on his grace philippians 1 7 says you are partakers of my grace so you are partaking of his grace but you look at one man what he has done but you see one man does very little that's why for me i'm always encouraging people to work for the lord because after he has worked for so so much so long in this country the country has more sinners more evil more wickedness than when he started preaching so it is not possible that god only calls one person god looking for many people god is looking for all of you if only you say yes yes lord here am i use me use me don't be too concerned about your money some of you are you feel so much about your money or maybe the money or you know what is your money your money is nothing it's your life your life and i know god is going to anoint you god is going to send you god is going to use you Give the Lord your loudest amen and amen.